Today we're going to read about prairies. And does anybody know what a prairie is? What? 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 A prairie is like this. It is? Like this. Um, I know what a prairie is. What's a prairie? It's a type of prairie. <laughs> there is a bird with prairie in its name. It's called a prairie chicken. And we are going to look at pictures of a prairie chicken. In fact, we might even have one out in the diorama out there we can look at when we're done. But prairies are something that all of everywhere we lived used to be like a prairie. And it had lots and lots of grass. But it wasn't short, short grass. It was tall grass. Did you want to tell us something? Yeah. What? Our prairies are the... Our prairies are the big grass. grass. Yeah. <laughs> no, prairie chickens are not predatory to humans. Humans are predatory to prairie chickens. <laughs> we'll look at a picture of a prairie chicken. Let's see if I can find one really quick. Here it is. This book tells about prairie animals, and you can look at what that prairie looks like. It's kind of flat. Those are bisons. You're exactly right. There used to be lots of bisons who lived in Iowa, but not anymore. We have some at another park in Marshall County, and there's one big stuffed bison up in the other room that we'll look at. This is an antelope. Antelopes like prairies. We have another antelope head that we can look at when we go outside. And let's see the grass around him. That grass is what a prairie is like. Some prairies have tall grass. In fact, they call it a tall grass prairie. And some prairies have shorter grass. And when, when the first people came to Iowa, they called the prairie a sea of grass because as far as you could look, it looked like the ocean and the wind would blow it and it looked like waves. So it looked like an ocean or a sea of grass. There's a pretty picture of a prairie. Look at that sky. I had some friends who came from a place where they grew up with lots of mountains and lots of really tall trees. They lived across the ocean in a place called Sweden. And when they came to Iowa, they saw so much sky. They had never seen so much sky before. Every time they saw a little tiny cloud way far away, they said, oh, is it going to rain? Because any time they saw a cloud, it was right above them, and it did mean rain. So here's one of the animals we see in the prairie. Anybody know what that is? A cloud. What is it? A cloud. There are clouds in the background. What's the animal? A fox. A fox. You're right. It's a fox. And foxes. My dog. Foxes. Yeah. Those, dogs. Those are prairie dogs. You're exactly right. Prairie dogs are fun. What? Did you know that I'm the first superhero of Iowa? <laughs> I did not know. We have the first superhero of Iowa with us. That's pretty cool. So let's talk about the prairie dogs. You can see they live in bunches. And look, they live on this little hill. They, they dig holes in the ground and they make their homes underground. They have lots and lots of tunnels that they live in. I have a really fun book to read to you very soon about prairie dogs. And they have to watch out. Hi, kids. Hey, is this the Y kids coming? Come on in. Find a spot nice and close so you can see pictures. OK, today we're talking about prairies. And we started this book with uh, a picture of the prairies in the grassland. And we were just talking about prairie dogs who live all together in a big bunch like that. And they have to watch out so that nobody would hurt them. Like, what do you? Those are animals, yeah. What do you think might hurt a little prairie dog? See how, what would hurt them? Um, people. People might, yeah, they'd be afraid of people, wouldn't they? What else? What else? What? Rh rhinos? Definitely rhinos, yeah. Elephants. Elephants. 
Elephants and rhinos would hurt them, but elephants and rhinos don't live with, near us. These guys live near us. So we don't have to worry about elephants hurting us, do we? No, but they would if they were here. What else? Uh, hippos. Hippos. That's another thing that's not here beside us. How about this guy? Fox. A fox. Do you think a fox could grab a little tiny prairie dog? And eat him. Yep. And do you know what else could? Do you know what else they have to worry about? What? A tiger. A tiger. They don't have to worry about a tiger just because they're not, they don't, tigers don't live by us. So we don't, we don't have to worry about tigers when we go out for a walk, do we? No. But do you know what they do worry about? See that owl up there? See his claws ready to grab something? He's not very big, so he couldn't carry away a prairie dog. But if there were a big owl, some owls are almost as big as you. Some owls are this tall. They can pick, grab a prairie dog. So let me show you. I have a book. Where's my book? Here it is. The Great Fuzzy Frenzy. This is going to show us some pictures of prairie dogs and a giant fuzzy ball. So let's read this book about prairie dogs. Is that a prairie dog? No, that's... I read this book That's a regular dog. I think it might be a golden retriever. I read that book when I was in kindergarten. Did you? So this dog likes to play with balls. Have you ever seen a ball like that? Yeah. What is that? A tennis ball, yep. And so, and here's a little black-tailed prairie dog running away from that big dog. I think I'd run away from that big dog too if I were little tiny like that. So let's see what happens in this story. Oh, first we turn the page this way. The dog had been playing with his ball, but he lost it. And down it went, bonk, bonk. Run for your life. Look, the prairie dogs are wondering, what came down our hole? They said, run for your life. Thump, thump. And look, it went down even further. All those prairie dogs have this great place to play and to live where they're nice and safe and nobody can bother them. But all of a sudden, this unusual round thing came running down their hole. It's a tennis ball. It's a tennis ball, but they'd never seen a tennis ball before. And, it, and let's see what happens to it. Plunk, it landed. It landed at the very bottom. I'll set it right there. And now they're all looking at it. They don't know if it's gonna hurt them. They don't know if it's gonna eat them up. They don't know what it's gonna do. They're just looking at it. They say slowly they crept out of their holes, inch by inch, dog by dog. What is it? A thing, a good thing or a bad thing? A round thing, a strange thing, a scary thing. What should we do? Don't touch it. Shh, is it alive? And here comes this big prairie dog. Stand back, boomed a voice. You act like a gutless groundhog, afraid of your own shadow. Oh no, it's big bark. Big mouth is more like it. They think this guy has a big mouth. He's the meanest prairie dog around. I thought he left town. Well, I'm back, growled Big Bark. So out of my way, let me have a look. So that big old prairie dog's going to go up close to it. Whoops, can you sit right here, sweetie, so everybody can see? Why don't you sit right there? <laughs> then you won't get tripped on. But... Okay. But before anyone could move, a little pipsqueak went running up. Big Bark reached out and poked the big round thing. How about, Keaton, could you slide over a little bit? Can you slide over just a little bit and then Penelope can sit right here? And then there's room for all of you. Okay, thank you. And the little guy ran in and grabbed a little bit of fuzz off of that tennis ball and put it on his head. He loved that fuzz on his head. They had never seen it. And they realized it wasn't going to hurt them. 
So then they all wanted fuzz, and they all started to grab at the fuzz of the ball. Everybody wanted a little fuzz to play with. And the prairie dogs pulled it and pulled it and stretched it and fluffed it and tugged it and twirled it and spiked it and swirled it. They fuzzed their ears and their heads and their noses. They fuzzed their feet, their tails, and their toeses. Big Bark was beside himself. Listen to me, you ridiculous rodent. Stop this fuzzy foolishness. He didn't get any fuzz, so he's kind of angry about that. But look at all the rest of them, how funny they are with their fuzz. They love it, don't they? So let, this guy has shoes. This guy made a curly cue. They did all kinds of creative things with their fuzz. But those prairie dogs didn't listen to that big mouth. They were busy being hot dogs and silly dogs and corny dogs and frilly dogs, top dogs, funny dogs, super dogs, bunny dogs. You're all nuts, he said. Squirrely fuzz freaks, yelled Big Bark, and he stormed away. See, they're all having lots of fun. And he's kind of grouchy about it. So, oh, here's another time we turn the book. News of the fuzz spread from hole to hole, burrow to burrow, town to town, and all the prairie dogs came to see that fuzz. Soon prairie dogs from everywhere were coming to see the fuzz. They came and they saw and they picked at it. So they're, everybody's picking at that tennis ball, getting some of that fuzz. What do you think's gonna happen? It's gonna break. Let's see. They twisted it, braided it, danced and paraded it. It was a fuzz frenzy, a fuzz fiesta, a fuzz fandangle. The whole prairie was a buzz about fuzz. Look at all the funny things they did with that fuzz. So let's see. <gasps> what happened to the ball? All the fuzz is gone. It's bald, isn't it? Yes, it's white now. It looks kind of like a golf ball now. Yep, Keaton. Did you know that? Yeah. Did you know that there's? Let Let's let Keaton tell us something. That that do you know what's between one and zero? That what? Do you know what's between one and number? What's between one and zero? Point five. Point five. That's. Yes. One, two, five, and then point zero, six, two, five. Okay, okay, you know what? You can go on to infinity, so let's read our story. <laughs> okay, they picked and pruned and pulled and picked, and they pinched and pulled and pruned and picked until the fuzz ran out. The big round thing was fuzzless, naked as a plucked chicken. Some prairie dogs got a lot of fuzz, and some got a little. Some got no fuzz at all, and they were mad. Give me that fuzz. Why? Because it's my fuzz. Well, it was. Get that fuzz, get that fuzz. Uh-oh. Look, they're all fighting now over the fuzz because they don't have enough of it for everybody, or at least they don't know how to share. Pulling, grabbing, swiping, nabbing, poking, jabbing. It was a war. Between the fuzzes and the fuzz knots, their peaceful town was a battleground. It was a fuzz fight, a fuzz feud, a fuzz fiasco. I started this, moaned Pipsqueak. I have to do something. Everyone, please stop fighting. And they, were, they fought and fought, and they got so tired, they crashed. They're all asleep. They got too tired fighting each other. And look, it looks to me like there's fuzz on everybody, isn't there? All they had to do was share it, right? Let's see. But the prairie dogs didn't listen. They were fuzzed out, fast asleep. Hours later, the prairie dogs began to stir, and they woke up. Hey, where's the fuzz? Where did it go? Who did it? They don't know where the fuzz went. Where do you think it went? The dog. Let's see. That big mouth guy stole it all. He took all the fuzz all for himself. Oh my goodness, was that very nice? No. no. Let's see what happens to him. The prairie dogs froze. They raced up in the long tunnel and there stood Big Bark. 
covered with fuzz from head to tail. I'm king of the fuzz, he, he snare, snarled. Do you hear me? I'm king of the fuzz. Swoop. What happened? Is king of the fuzz there anymore? Look what happened. What did happen? An eagle took him. That's right. Because he was bad. He was bad and he was... He was so bright colored, the eagle could spot him right away. And the eagle grabbed him. See those claws around him? Just like the claws on that little tiny guy. The eagle grabbed him. We can see that this is a bald eagle because we can see his white head and his white tail, and the rest of him is pretty dark. Big bark, wiggle free, the prairie dog shouted. Shake loose, hurry, we'll catch you. Big bark twisted and turned and wormed and squirmed, and at last he was free of the fuzz. Yay, the crowd cheered. And look at everybody wanting to catch him. They're, they're, even though they didn't like him, they wanted to help him, didn't they? Yeah. Even though he stole all their fuzz, they were still wanting to help him. Big Bark fell faster and faster. No, the prairie dog scattered. Get back here, yelled Pip. Quick, make a circle. Hold out your paws. Then they all held out their paws and plop! Down came that old Big Mouth who stole all their fuzz. But does he have the fuzz anymore? No. No, it stayed up in the eagle's tongs up here. The eagle's claws held onto the fuzz and he slipped right out. So the fuzz saved his life. You saved me, Big Bark cried, but I stole all your fuzz and now it's gone forever. Good, said Pipsqueak, fuzz is trouble, right? Yay, the crowd shouted and the friends hugged friends. <laughs> and cousins hugged cousins and dogs hugged dogs. We don't need fuzz, said Pip. But with the eagle around, we do need a watchdog with a big bark. Big bark rose up on his hind legs. The eagle's back. The eagle's back. Watch out. And they all were able to run down in their safe little den. And they were safe from the eagle. So that big mouth guy actually helped them this time, didn't he? He was a helper to them, and he kept them safe from the big eagle. And they all said, thank you to him, that old big mouth. And now, look, the dog came back with a new ball. Do you think they're going to want the fuzz from that? Another ball. OK. All right. Now, OK, everybody stretch your hands up high, high, high. Touch your ears. Touch your knees, touch your shoulders, and fold them in your lap. Okay, Penelope, can you sit down, sweetheart? Okay, this is out on the prairie. Do you, and look how beautiful that prairie is. In fact, I'll open up the whole book. See how pretty that prairie is? We have a diorama out in our big area, and it has a prairie in it with lots of beautiful flowers. And so we'll go say, take a look at it right before we take a walk, okay? All right, this one has kind of a rhyme to it. I think you'll, you might recognize it. Out on the prairie where the snake root greets the sun lived a shaggy mother bison and her little calf one. Wallow, said the mother. Can you wallow? Wallow, said the mother, bison and her little one calf. Uh, wallow, said the mother. I wallow, said the one. So they wallowed in the dust where the snake root greets the sun. See those pretty flowers and all that dust? Out on the prairie where the sky is crystal blue lived a speedy mother pronghorn and her little fawns, too. Run, said the mother. We run, said the two. So they ran through the wheat grass where the sky is crystal blue. They're actually pronghorn antelope. Another animal that lives on the prairie, and we can look at a real head of a pronghorn when we leave. Out on the prairie where the constant wind blows free lived a mother meadowlark and her little chicks three. 
Chirrup, said the mother. Chirrup, called the three. So they all called all morning where the constant wind blows free. That's one thing about a prairie. When it doesn't have trees, the wind can blow and blow and blow, and there are no trees to stop it. And sometimes it gets very windy. That's why we love to have trees that stops the wind and keeps it from being so windy. When we have trees in a prairie, it's called a savanna, and especially oak trees in Iowa, so they call it an oak savanna. Out on the prairie where the wispy clouds soar lived Mother Prairie Dog and her little pups four. Bark, said the mother, we bark, said the four, so they barked and they chattered and the wispy clouds soared. We already read about the prairie dogs on the prairie, didn't we? I have foot in the hand. You do? Can you sit down, sweetie, so they can see behind you? Out on the prairie where the grandma grasses thrive lived a mother grasshopper and her little nymphs five. Hop, said the mother, we hop, said the five, so they hopped helter-skelter where the grandma grasses thrive. So sometimes in prairies, especially long ago, the, the grasshoppers got in big, big bunches and they ate everything around them. And when there's a huge bunch, almost a cloud of grasshoppers in the air, it's called locusts, and they used to eat all the farmer's crops. But now we don't have so many, so we don't have that problem anymore. Um, out on the prairie where the grass and flowers mix lived a mother sharp-tailed grouse and her little chick six. Scurry, said the mother, we scurry, said the six. So they scurried after beetles where the grass and flowers mix. So they're eating some of those beetles and grasshoppers for their lunch. Oh, here's one of those owls. Out on the prairie where the yucca grows toward heaven lived a mother howdy owl and her little chick seven. Nod, said the mother. We nod, said the seven. So they nodded in the twilight where the yucca grows toward heaven. Can you nod like the owl did? <laughs> You know, the other thing an owl can do is turn their heads all the way around. Can you turn and look behind you? But you can't turn around, can you? Then turn and look the other way. What if you could turn all the way around? That'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Did you know there were snakes in the prairie grass? Out on the prairie where the primrose blooms late lived a mother rattlesnake and her little snakes ate. Slither, said the mother. We slither, said the eight. So they slithered, chasing lizards, and the primrose bloom late. <laughs> yep. So the snakes are going to eat that lizard. And the snakes would probably eat the grasshoppers, too. Out on the prairie where the silver stars shine lived a mother coyote and her little pups nine. How? said the mother. We howl, said the nine. So they howled and they whined where the silver stars shine. So coyotes are awake at night and they talk to each other by ow, ow, ow. And they make lots of noise. So sometimes if you're out and it's dark and you hear someone yip, yip, yipping, it's probably a bunch of coyotes talking to each other. I, live, I used to live in a house not too far over there and my window would be open at night and I could hear the Coyotes from this Grimes farm, yip, yip, yipping. Out on the prairie where the moon glows once again lived a mother Great Plains toad and her little toad's ten. Jump, said the mother. We jump, said the ten. So they jumped through the clover where the moon glows once again. Did you know toads grow on the prairie? We'll have to see if we can see some of these things in our prairie. Oh, and that's the end of that one. So we have, we're out of time for stories and it's time for us to take a walk. <laughs>